Hey everybody, so we have a couple things we're gonna cover today. One, we have a super safe tree removal to get this dead tree away from the barn. That's gonna go really well. And then we're gonna try burning two different stumps out using two different techniques. We're gonna use a barrel on both of them that we're gonna rig those up during this episode as well, kind of show you how we did that. But we're gonna prep both of those stumps differently. So be sure to stay tuned and see how this whole process works out. We've got some fun little random projects going on today. We're just gonna be cleaning up some of this property. We've got a few things we gotta round up first, and then uh, we'll jump right into it, and I'll give you a good rundown on what we're doing. Of course, having some problems with the door latch on the truck. Haven't had time to tinker with it yet, so you know. Got old ratchet strap, keeps her closed and dry. All righty here. Give me a minute, we'll get going. Yeah, there we go. So you guys have been looking at some of the prep work we've been doing towards this project we're going to work on or start working on today. We'll walk over here and I'll show you. All right, so here's the contraption we are working on. You guys have seen this on YouTube before, but we're just making a stump burner out of an old 55 gallon drum, some old air duct I got laying around, which will slide right in that hole there for a little extra added airflow. And then of course, the leaf blower that Keith L sent us to use. So that's what we're doing now. Obviously, I can't keep a stump burning just by itself. It's gonna take a little extra fuel. So we're gonna do a few birds with one big old stone. We've got all this mess I wanna clean up. We'll throw that in the tractor and take it over by the stumps and stage it. We've got this tree, which is dead or on its way. As you can see, the top looks pretty rough. And we get a little bit of a close up on this feller here. Inside looks pretty rough too. Yeah, these cool mushrooms growing on there though. But anyway, we're gonna get that taken down. Some of it will cut for firewood, some will cut to the mill, some will burn. As you can see though, it's got a little lean towards the barn, so that should be kind of interesting. And out in front of the barn, we have this little bitty tree, which is clearly all the way dead. So we're gonna take that down and burn that as well. This is stump number one. This is stump number two that we will burn uh, if you're wondering why we don't just bring a track up here and pop these out like we would or have in the past with other stumps there is a believe it or not a four inch water main that runs right down through there now that one would probably be clear but this one definitely is going to have some roots uh, near if not on that four inch main that runs right there so i don't really want to risk breaking a water main we're just going to burn that one out and since we're burning that one out we might as well do that one too So this area here is where we've been doing uh, some wood splitting. We've been doing a little bit of milling and it's just kind of gotten a mess. You can, you can see that. It just got away from me and we need some stuff to burn in the barrels anyway to help keep those stumps going. So figured might as well just kind of get it knocked out while we're doing this. Just get it all done at once. And we plan on hauling some base rock in here pretty soon as well to just kind of help keep the area nice and keep me out of the mud whenever we're splitting wood. This mower I bought at the beginning of the summer. I haven't really done any follow-up videos since I purchased it, but I have to say I've been very happy with it. I've been using the heck out of the thing. I definitely need to give the blades a quick tune-up and probably try to locate the second wheel because uh, as you guys know, if you've been with the channel for a while, I'm pretty hard on wheels and I'm already down to just one wheel on the back of that mower. But we'll get that thing tracked down at some point and uh, you know, we'll keep on keeping on.
All right, so we got this all cleaned up, looking nice, looking real nice. This is a pile of wood we'll cut up and split at some point for whoever wants it. And we've got a few random saplings coming up that we left behind. There's a wasp right there, that's nice anyway. There's a sycamore. And this one here is a poplar, of course, coming up nice. But this is all cleaned up. Looks a lot better than what it did. Um, we're gonna leave those there because we're gonna mill those at some point. Remember that tree is the one that's coming out. And when we haul church for the YouTube Yacht Road, we're gonna bring a couple loads in here and spread out so I have a place to mill and split, not in the mud. And then I can get the implements off the front porch, the front porch, and put them on the back side of the building. Be a little bit nicer. Eventually we'll get the metal cut out of this that we want and get that hauled off as well. But pretty happy with that step. I do believe the next step. All right, so the next step is this tree right here. We're gonna go ahead and cut this one down because it's dead and there's lots of small stuff at the top so we can help use that to get the stumps going over there. So let's get this all. So one fun thing about having an old broken GoPro that I'm discovering is that uh, I can take it and I can sit it somewhere out there and see if I hit you on this one for fun. Why not? It's old, it's busted. Let's try it. It was a good try. Guys, say hi to each other. All right. So we got that little feller down, no problem. Didn't anticipate any problems. But while I've got these chaps on, because it is 90 degrees today and humid, and I don't feel like wearing these any longer, then I have to with the heat we've got today. Let's go ahead and do this guy too. Sure. Now, let's step back and look at this tree one more time real quick. You see it's obviously got a little bow in it right there and it's got a little slight lean towards the barn not to mention most of the canopy uh i'd say is over center this way from canopy weight not that there's a lot there but there is a little bit to consider normally if i was going to do it i'd cut down here where i've got plenty of meat and just wedge it over and be happy with it but you see right here this is a uh, well you know, but it's pretty dead stuff which means i don't know how much actual structure i have and i'm afraid if i try to wedge it that the hinge will just break and then we'll end up on the barn so we're gonna go over to the house grab a couple things and we're gonna give it a little bit extra insurance on this one so the insurance we're gonna use today is a come along use the tree to help get it stretched out there of course a ratchet strap could never do anything right if we didn't have a ratchet strap to go with it and the uh, don't use the top step as a step step ladder perfect So I think it's important to point this out. I am not trying to pull the tree over. That is 100% not what I'm trying to do. All I'm trying to do is just absolutely make sure it does not end up on that barn. And what I'm doing with the ratchet strap is getting it just barely, barely over center. And then I'm gonna wedge the rest over like I normally would. Now, when we get all done with this, I'm gonna go over the stump in a little bit more detail and my thought process behind it, but I just wanna make sure everybody's clear we're not trying to pull it over. I would not be standing where I was standing. If I was trying to pull it over, we'd have some pulleys set up and some longer cable set up. Just wanna make sure we're all on the same page. So we're going. See that tree? That tree. We're gonna try to go right between those trees that's the goal i don't know what'll happen but i do know this it's going to be on video and uh we got the drone getting ready to go up too so yee 
Ha. So. This is just going to be a little test to see if it's actually going to take the tree where I want it. That one broke. I'm gonna break that one. so low. I'll explain it in just a second. Alrighty. That a girl. Woo! All right, let's talk about that back cut. I could not be happier with the way that landed. I mean, right where we wanted it. A uh, couple things though, that earmuff broke off, so I just pulled that one off. But I found in the summertime, I don't like those earmuffs anyway. They make my ears hot, so I'll probably just be sticking with earplugs. Anywho, we'll just call that a modification. I do want to talk about this back cut, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments on this process because I was standing there, and a lot of people are gonna say, don't stand in front of where the tree is gonna be, but you'll notice that where the ratchet strap is or where the come along is to pull because we were pulling off at an angle and because we aimed it that way right where i was where the tree is is it still dangerous yes do you still have to pay attention yeah absolutely i mean you don't want to end up underneath there obviously i like pancakes but i don't like being one now let's talk about this back cut see where the strap is at on here i'd say that's probably on the bottom quarter of the tree the bottom quarter of the tree now the whole reason we put the strap on there was because normally we just wedge it up but whenever you use a wedge and you lift the tree and the inside is dead like that there's a chance that this dead stuff will also lift out where your hinge is at and then it's just going to fall off wherever it wants to go so we put the strap on there for a little extra insurance and put some pressure that direction now because that's on the bottom quarter of the tree that means whenever we go pulling that way it also puts pressure at the bottom that direction as well. Now, if that was at the very, very tip top and you know, up here at the tip of the finger and it pulled like that, that would be fine. But when it's near the bottom like that, it also puts pressure that way on the hinge. So if I rely solely, if my cut was here, like a lot of people might say it should be, if my cut was here and I relied solely on this dead hinge to prevent this from shearing off from the pressure from that strap, we'd probably had a tree on the barn. But when you come back on this back cut and you step down a couple inches, now any pressure going that way at the bottom end from pulling on the strap gets sunk into this whole big chunk of meat and that reduces the chances of it shearing off. So that's why I did it that way. Now, is that sketchy? Yeah, but is it kind of fun? Yeah, I enjoy doing these challenges and trying to figure out ways to do this. It's just fun when a tree ends up where you want it. I'll say that. 
The next step, I'm gonna be honest, I just heard Chelsea pull up and she went grocery shopping. So that's what I'm doing the rest of the day, but the next clip will be the next step in the process, which should be burning. I think we're ready to start burning. So just so you have a timestamp in your head, if you're trying to figure out how long this whole process is taking, that first day where I was out there clearing, that took about three hours to get everything cleaned up and cut down. And now we're on day two. I just came off shift this day and I got out there and got that fire going about nine o'clock in the morning. All right, so you can see we got the smaller stuff on top of the stump. Now, obviously the idea with the barrel is that it forces the heat into that stump, which means we can just kind of start throwing stuff around the edges of the stump. You guys know what I'm talking about. So we had that dead tree we cut down over there. I'm gonna set you up on a time-lapse and we're just gonna start dragging all those limbs over, cram this thing full. So we got quite a bit of that in there and most of that dead tree is in there burning and going. You saw we added a little piece of pipe with the leaf blower and that's helped out quite a bit. You just kind of want to keep it going as hot as possible. So I went over to the house and grabbed a, a few throttle linkages where we'll get something rigged up on there. Just kind of get it at a little low blow and keep it going hot. And then we're going to move over to that stump and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that one a little different. So my, uh, my neighbor just drove by, looked at this contraption, looked at me, gave me the nod of approval. It doesn't get any better than that. So on this one, remember that one, we just cut some notches in it, left it tall. This one, we're gonna kind of clean up some of the stuff around it, cut it as low to the ground as possible, and then, uh, you know what, I'll just show you. Give that leaf blower a break for just a minute. So we just got some of this cut. Now I don't, <laughs> it's frustrating because you're cutting all this dirt in your mud so your chain gets dull and then you're cutting here and you're cutting with a dull chain and you're like, well, is it worth it to sharpen it real quick whenever you know you're gonna hit dirt and mud again? I don't know. I just fought the dull chain just to get this part done. So we're gonna start firing this one and see where it takes us. That's how much that's burnt down while I was messing with that other one. So we'll toss. We'll toss some of this stuff in real quick. And we'll give her a shake. Too bitty fire going here. I just carried some coals over from that one, threw some sticks on it. She's going pretty good. I know a lot of you make fun of me for the way I start fires. There's definitely a lot easier ways with gas and, you know, all kinds of ways. But I've just like, uh, I've always liked starting fires this way. I don't know. Set the barrel on top here. What do we think? Let's do right. Let's do right there. And then we can just start throwing stuff in. Get it going.
see there's not much left of that pile. I just topped that one off. Um, and this one's filled up, slowly starting to burn. I'm gonna get my saw stuff picked up because there is some rain supposed to blow in, but that I don't think will affect this. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting, might as well go ahead and mow this grass. I'm gonna set you up on a time lapse so you can just kind of watch these two uh, burn in the distance. And then we'll go for that. So two things that could speed this process up for somebody if you're gonna try this. You can notice that one right there on the right, flaming up pretty good. That's got the leaf blower on it. The airflow definitely makes a difference with these barrels. And you can tell, there it is on that one, and we're gonna move it back. Definitely makes a difference. So if you have access to two leaf blowers, that will speed this process up as well. Or if you're as close to electricity, which here I am not, and you have a couple extra blowers laying around, you could rig something up with that as well. That's definitely gonna help. Also, the one I cut off flush with the ground and put a few plunge cuts in. If you take the time and make a few more plunge cuts deeper and more frequent, I'd say that would probably speed it up as well. One thing for sure I'm learning at this point in the process, it's a very passive process, it's a slow process, but we will see at the end of the video just how well it works. So be sure to stay tuned. Uh, my battery died in the leaf blower, but that's okay. Let's look at the first one we did. Now that pile is all there, is all in there. That tree that was dead and we cut up is all in there and either burned up or kind of piled up on here now, which means what I'm hoping, I don't want to get too close because there's a lot of heat coming out of there. That should mean that it's pretty much close to solid coals uh, smoldering all the way around that stump. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. So we're just going to let that one burn down into the barrel. And this was the second one we did. And on this one, we can actually, because the stump was bigger than the barrel, can you see that progress right there? Now, uh, what we may end up having to do is, you know, it burns down a little bit and then we slide it over and burn different sections. I'm not 100% sure yet, because it's the first time I've done it. But you can see we have quite a bit in there. And I'm hoping we can get the rest of that pile in there by the end of the day. So, I'm just gonna go back to the house. I got some other things to do today. Nothing worth videoing though and we will come back and check on these in just a little bit. All right, so it's been about two hours. I thought I'd come over and check on the barrels real quick. I just went to check the mail, so I thought I'd take a look. That's barrel number two. You can see what she's got going on in there. And you can see around the outside there. Let's see if I got something I can use for a little bit of a straight edge for a reference for you guys up. You see that? So it is, in fact, burning down into that stump, which is nice. Now, the stump's wider than the barrel, so at some point we may have to uh, Let's move the barrel. I don't know. Maybe that's small enough. It'll come out on its own too. And we'll see barrel number one here. Yeah, it burned down pretty good too. I don't really have a good way to check on the progress on this one because this is the one we didn't cut to the ground. Remember, this one's still sticking up. So I don't really know how well that one is burning in there. So what we're going to do, I've got a little bit of that pile left. We're just going to kind of divide what we got left amongst the two barrels. Let it cook for a little bit longer and then we'll come back over later and uh, see what happens. So one of the barrels fell over while we were waiting at the house. Um, this one's doing pretty good though. That will give us a chance to look and see how that stump's doing. So we'll do that, but I'll show you. We had a couple distractions at the house while uh, we were over there, so I didn't get back as soon as I anticipated. But uh, FedEx man dropped off some new tires for the Honda 250. So we'll have a hilarious video of me trying to put tires on. If you've never seen me change out tires on wheels, check out the video in the description when you're done with this. Uh, I don't do it very often, which means I'm not very good at it, which makes for comical times whenever I try to change out their perfect semi-tires. Uh, oh, the other distraction is I discovered the A-coil for the air conditioner to house or for the HVAC unit was a solid block of ice. So, you know, tires yay, A-coil nay. But let's take a closer look at what we got going here. So this is the one that uh, has not fallen over. Dig around it real quick. I want to see something. All right. So this one's actually burned down into the stump pretty well. See that? Burned down in there pretty good, actually. Uh, we're going to attempt. Oh, by the way, I say we. We're going to attempt to um slide this over this section a little bit and see if we can burn that chunk down as well.
that uh, cooks a little bit. We're gonna take a closer look at this one here. This barrel fell off. We can kind of see what progress we made. So you can see, uh, maybe I'll put a before picture up real quick to remind you. But this is what we've got so far. Not terrible. There's the bottom of one of the cuts. There's still some heat coming off, but it's not crazy. But you can see there's the bottom of one of the cuts there. There's some stuff left in the barrel. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the saw, make a few more little deeper cuts real quick. And we'll see if we can get that barrel put back up there and get some more wood on it and see if we can keep this process going. back on the back side of the barn that is the tree that had to lean towards the barn and we're going to get that kind of cut up and start bringing that over to the barrels all right so we got all that cut up she's taking off with the load but i won't I won't quite let her go by herself yet go ahead keep going just experiment with it which way the wheel turns and back up so you can see what the tractor does but you need the back end of the tractor to go that way so the front end will swing around that way because we're headed down that road, okay? Oh. So just back up a little bit and play with it back and forth and see what it needs to do. Now she's got her. She drives like her dad, 27 point turnarounds everywhere we go. <laughs> so this is our oldest daughter. If you've been with the channel for a while, you have seen her before, but she saw a toy she absolutely had to have online and asked if we would get it for her. And we said, well, you can absolutely work for it and earn it if you want to do it that way. And she jumped at the chance and said, absolutely. And this is what she wanted to do. She wanted to run the tractor and carry sticks back and forth in the bucket. And we had no problem with that. You can see it's very flat up here. And I stayed pretty close to her the whole time to make sure she didn't do anything too crazy, but she's actually pretty good at it. And we had a pretty Pretty good time that day. All right, so they are playing tag behind me. It's about eight o'clock. We came over to throw a few more things on the barrels and kind of check on them and see how they're doing. So I do have a couple opinions on this before we see the final results. Now I will say my preferred method would definitely be renting an excavator from Dirt Perfect and just popping the stumps out. But like we talked about, there's the water line there. So I thought this will be a fun opportunity to try the stump burning method. And we tried two different uh, techniques with as far as how the stump setup went when we burnt them so I will be curious to see which one works better um, I will say this though I do wish I had two days in a row I think if I had two days in a row we could get a really really good job on this I think it'll still work but uh, I do go back on shift tomorrow so I got a 24 hour shift tomorrow uh, Chelsea said she's gonna throw some stuff in the barrels tomorrow while I'm at work so it should keep the coals going so next time we check in on this will be in 36 hours let's just call it 36 hours We'll come back, we'll check on this, and see what the final result is on these stumps. But we do want to top these off one more time before we head back to the house, hit them with the leaf blower, and then we'll check in with you in a few hours. Well, like 36 of them.
is what I'm wearing on our next date. It's gonna be wild. You're gonna need one too. They said I needed more protection, so welding jacket and a helmet, I suppose, is what we're going with. It's nice when your family's concerned about you. All right, so I just got home from shift. It's been about 36 hours since we last checked on these things. Let's pop these barrels off and see what we got. We didn't plunge cut. We just um, left the stump itself there. Tell you what. Now, there's still quite a bit of heat on here. Now we do have one little uh, random chunk there, but that's not too big a deal. But I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by how well that burnt down. In fact, I'm gonna take the leaf blower, I'm just gonna clean that stuff off and I'm gonna put the barrel back on it and we'll let it cook. But uh, that'll be the last update we do on this one. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's check the one that we did the plunge cuts in. Well, we did the plunge cuts in and that one actually burnt down into the ground a little bit You can see there's kind of a hole. There's still some over here and there's still quite a bit of heat coming off that thing So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set that barrel back on there and just let it smolder a little longer All right, so pros and cons of this I think maybe the only con I found is the time frame uh, It definitely takes let's see we're on day three maybe day four and it's gonna have to sit and smolder for several days still yet to get it just a little bit lower but that's still faster than using Epsom salts, so maybe the time frame's not that big of a con. Pros are pretty obvious. You don't have to uh, pay for or rent a stump grinder. You don't have to pay or rent a uh, excavator. You don't have to pay a company to come out and grind or remove it. Pretty much anybody can do this. If you've got a little property, you probably have a small chainsaw, and if you don't, I bet you know somebody that has one that lets you borrow it. Um, it's pretty easy to acquire these barrels. You can get on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. They're on there all the time. So a pretty effective method. Uh, I will do updates in a future video. We're gonna do a little uh, top dressing over here one day and we'll address this in the future just to see how it all finished out after a few more days of smoldering. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Are there things I'd do different? Absolutely, and I'm sure you've already left it in the comments, but if you haven't, go ahead and tell me how you do it different or if you've got a different way that you remove stumps that might be helpful to some of the people watching this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.